Welcome back to Augmented Matrices Part 2. Now we're ready to solve actual systems of equations using our row operations. Okay, let's go over one more time what our goal is. What is it we are trying to create in this thing? Because that is a mission critical concept is to understand what it is you want to build. What we're after in the end, we want to end up with a 1 in the first column. Then we will make a 0 below it. Then we want to get a 1 over here in the second column. For our two variable matrix, that's all we need. These other, the other columns can have any number we want in them. But you not, must do it, and you need to do it in that order. Find to get the 1 first, then you make the 0, and then finally you make the 1 again. You must do it in that order to get this to work. Otherwise, if you don't do it in that order, your row operations will cause you to lose the one or the zero you made earlier. So it's very important that you do it in that order. Okay, so first of all, we need to turn this matrix into an augmented matrix. Okay, you must work downward. For my sanity and your sanity, you must work downward. Do not go across your paper. You won't be able to keep track of your row operations, and you won't be able to tell where you went with it. So it must work downward. Key. <coughs> All right. So turning it into the augmented matrix, that's the easy part. We're going to have 7, negative 2, negative 71, and 2, 8, and 14 here. I'm going to put the little dotted line down the middle so we keep track that those is the actual where we hope our solutions will end up here shortly. Okay, so first thing we need to do, make the one in the top left corner. That's our goal. So we have to ask ourselves, how can I make a one? You can only use the two numbers in the first column. It is also legal. It would be legal to do this, but tell me if you want to. You could take one seventh times row one. And that would, 7 times 1 7, that would give you 1, that will work, but it's going to turn the rest of your row into fractions. Do you want to do this with fractions? No, that would be insanity at its finest. So we have to figure out a way we can get a 7 and a 2 to make a 1. Well, 7's big, so i got to make the 2 get bigger, and I want to make the 2 get within one on either side of seven. So I can make the two become a six, or I can make the two become an eight. I wish I could ask you what you would prefer to do. It really doesn't make any difference. Um, most people will probably go with the smaller number and go with a six. So in order to do that, I would need to take the two times what? It needs to get multiplied by negative 3. So, because then I would have 7 plus negative 6. So when I go to write my row operations, I'm thinking, okay, I have to write this as row 1 staying as it is. I'm taking row 2 times a negative 3. So essentially it's minus 3 times row 2. And where do I want to put this answer? I want the answer in row 1 because I'm trying to create the 1 in row 1. So, all right, here we go. I'm consequently then going to be leaving row two alone. I'm not changing it. It's just sitting there hanging out. So, if I do this, if I take that row, I'm taking row one minus three times row two, that's going to give me seven minus six, or yes, the one I wanted. But I have to do that every single time. And give me a moment. I want to make this one be a different color. If I do that again, and I take row 1 minus 3 times row 2, so that's going to be negative 2 minus 24, that's going to make me have a negative 26. And if I do it a third time, and I know sometimes these numbers look horrible, don't panic, it'll be okay. 
If I do that a third time and I take row 1, the negative 71, minus 3 times row 2, which is 3 times 14, that's 42. So negative 71 and negative 42, okay, that's kind of big. That's actually a negative, whoops, that's not going to work. That's actually going to be a negative 113. That's kind of nasty numbers. But don't panic. It may all be okay. Let's move on. We've got goal, goal steps done first. We've got number one done. Our next goal is we need a zero right here. We want this one to become a zero. So we have to figure out how can I make that become a zero. Okay, now it becomes kind of a common operation. We do this every single time. You always use the one in the top row. So we're going to use this one in the top row. We got a two down here. With normal elimination, how do you make that happen? Well, sure. It's nothing more than saying, oh, I'm going to take negative two times the first row and add it to the second row. Because I want it to add up to zero. Making zeros is easy, particularly when you've got a one. Now, where do you want to write the answer? You're writing the answer in the second row, because we're trying to make the second row have the zero. So what does that mean I'm doing to the first row? I am doing nothing to the first row. It's going to sit there. It's happy. So first row sitting there, 1, negative 26, negative 113. Okay, we are now going to change the second row. So here we go. We said we were going to take negative 2 times the first row plus add it to the second row. What am I going to get? Yes, I'm going to get a 0. Actually, I wanted to do color code that to the blue. Okay. When I do the same exact thing again, I'm taking negative 2 times the first row and I am adding it to the second row. Negative 2 times negative 26 is 52. 52 plus 8 would make 60. And then finally, this is the one where we will find out if we're doing this right, or if we have mental errors in here somewhere. If I now take negative 2 times row 1, add it to row 2, wow, that's going to be 226 plus 14. Gosh, 226 plus 14? I think that's 240. Okay, that is really good news. Because when it comes time to make the third step of our goal, the third step of our goal is to make this baby be a one over here in the second column, bottom row. Okay, you can't, you have to get that to happen without using row 1. Because if you use row 1, you're going to use the 1 out here and you're going to make your x's get all messed up. So we have to make that 60 become a 1 and use only row 2 to do it. So what's the only way we can make 60 become a 1? You're not allowed to just add or subtract a number to the numbers in here. You can only multiply or divide. So we can't do 60 minus 59 and then do 240 minus 59. That's illegal. You couldn't do that in substitution or elimination either. But you can here choose to simply take row 2 and divide it by 60, put the answer back in row 2. Am I changing row 1? Nope, because we are happy with row 1. It's got the 1 we want. We've got the 0 here. Row 2 divided by 60, 0 divided by 60 is 0. 60 divided by 60 is 1. 240 divided by 60 is 4. Okay, we have now succeeded in our goal. We have got this thing into the proper form, into the triangulated mode where we have the 1s in the diagonal and 0 in the corner. So now I can simply turn this back into equations and substitute in to solve. So if I turn this back into equations, I have nothing more than x minus 26y equals negative 113 and y equals 4. 
Well, hmm, since I know y equals 4, I can sub that in, and I would have x minus 26 times 4 equals negative 113. 26 times 4 is 104. And if I add that over, I'm going to end up with negative 9. And so my solution to this actual problem, then, is the ordered pair negative 9, 4. Yes, I know that seems really complicated, and you'd rather just do simple elimination or substitution. I get that. Okay, this method has become extremely popular because it's very easy to program a computer to do these kind of row operations. It's the way a memory hold, the computer's memory holds data. It, it holds data like a matrix. Each piece of data is in a different row and column, and so it's very simple to have a computer do these kind of operations. So consequently, since the computer age, augmented matrices have seen some rebirth and excitement. Okay, now we are going to try a three variable problem. And this one won't lie to you. This has a bit of challenge. So the question is, first of all, what's our goal? What do we want it to look like? We want ones in the diagonal. Now I have to have three rows of ones. And I want zeros always beneath any ones. The rest of the matrix can be any number, doesn't matter. But it has to look like that when we get done. Now, what order do we want this done in? Well, that's also mission critical. You go downward. You make the 1, you make the 0, you make the other 0. Then you go to the next column. You make the 1, you go down and make the 0, and then lastly, you make the final 1. So it's going downward every time. Consequently, yep, this baby's going to take a few row operations. It's OK. We are up to the challenge. So once again, you're working downward. I'm turning this into the augmented matrix. I got 1, 1, negative 2, negative 1. I got 4, negative 1, 3, 3, 3, 2, negative 1, 4. OK. Once again, can't tell you how important it is to copy the problem down. It's extremely painful if you discover your mistake is because you didn't copy it down right out of the book. OK. First step, what's goal number one? Get a 1 in the top left corner. Check. We have succeeded. We have a 1 in the top left corner. Woo! -hoo! All right. Step two. We need to make a 4. Or excuse me. We need to make a, a 0 where that 4 currently exists. OK, this is elimination, dudes. If you had 1x and 4x and you were going to make it eliminate, wouldn't you take the top row times negative 4? That is all we are doing here. So you're going to take the top row times negative 4 and add it to the second row. Where are you putting the answer? Well, it's the second row where we want the 0, so we're putting it in the second row. We are completely and totally leaving the top row alone. It's got the 1. You will never change the top row ever again. It's already got the 1 in it. So the top row never changes after this point. It just sits. OK, so we are now taking negative 4 times 4, or negative 4 times 1, adding it to 4 will get us a 0. I didn't leave myself enough room here. And so I'm going to get my 0. But then it gets exciting. I'm taking top row times negative 4. Can't see that one. Hold on a second. I need to change colors again. I'm kind of liking the white, bright yellow. So I'm taking the top row times negative 4, adding it to the second row. So what's negative 4 plus negative 1? Answer, negative 5. OK, second one. Top row times negative 4, add it to the second row. 8 plus 3, that's 11. Once again, top row times negative 4, add it to row 2, so add it to 3. That's 4 plus 3, or 7. 
Ta-da! I've completed step two. I have got the zero where I want it. Now, typically, you do two steps here at a time because what's the third thing I need? I need another zero. I need this zero in the bottom left corner. And you can easily do that just like you do with elimination. So now we're going to go back and we're going to go, oh, okay. You're going to use row one looking up here and we're going to look at row one and row three just like we do elimination. What do I have to do to make those add up to zero? I need to take the top row times negative three and add it to the third row. So that's exactly the row operation I'm going to write down. I'm taking negative three times row one, but this time I'm adding it to row three. Where am I putting the answer? In row three. Okay, so here we go. It says take row one times negative three. Whoops, sorry, I'm in the wrong spot. My bad. A little fade here in a moment. Yeah, sorry. I probably should do that in another color this time so you can see it better. Let's do bright green maybe. So this time I'm taking top row times negative three, adding it to the third row. Negative three plus three. Yep, that's zero. Do it again. Top row times negative three. Add it to row three. Negative three plus two. That's negative one. Okay, one more time. Top row times negative three. Add it to row three. Six plus negative one. That's five. And last but not least, top row times negative three. Add it to row three. Three plus four is seven. We are halfway there. We have got the first column done. Okay, next question is, where am I going from here? Well, what was the next thing? You have to make go move over a column. You're now in the second column, and you want to make the one in row two. So we are trying to find a way to make this number right here become a 1. OK. That looks hard. I don't want to divide by negative 5, because that's going to give me fractions. And fractions are bad in this. Don't want to do fractions. But hey, notice, doesn't row 3 right here have a negative 1 in it? What if I just switch those rows? And since I don't want a negative one, I want a positive one, I take it times negative one. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to switch the rows, but I'm also going to take and put, try and sorry here. Um, I'm taking a negative 1 times row 3, because I want to make it positive, and then I'm going to switch it with row 2. So the top row never changing the top row ever again. Second row, we're switching them. The 0 holds. I am now taking this bottom row 3 times negative 1. So every one of these is getting multiplied by negative 1. And it's moving up to row 2. So that's going to give me positive 1, positive 5, and negative, excuse me, negative 5 and negative 7. All I did is switch the row, change the sign. Now, what do I put in the third row? I'm moving row 2 down there. So those have now switched places. Boy, doggies, are we having fun or what? <coughs> now, because I do not want this to get horribly long to post, I am now shifting over. And so I am now taking my problem way back up, which is probably not a good thing. We'll see if we can manage to see this as we do this. I, what's the next thing I need? Yes, I need 
to create a zero right here. And to do it, I use the one right above it. Never use the top row now. The top row, if you move the, use the top row, you'll lose these zeros right here. These zeros are going to be gone. If you start combining with the top row, it'll add a one in there. You cannot use the top row anymore. You can only use these two rows, second and third. We need to make it become a zero. So what's the obvious choice? Well, we're doing elimination. So the obvious choice is to simply take row 2 times 5 and add it to row 3. So that's exactly the row operation we're going to indicate here. We're taking 5 times row 2. We're adding it to row 3. Where are we putting the answer? Well, we're trying to make the 0 in row 3, so that's where we're putting it. So we now know, a whole lot of this is now just copy down, copy down, copy down. We now know row 1 never changes. Row 2 actually never changes either because we've got it with the 0 and the 1 that we want. So row 2 is happy. The only thing we're changing now is row 3. Okay, so we're technically taking... 5 times row 2 and adding it to row 3. But 5 times 0 plus 0 is 0. Okay. Second row or second column, 5 times 1, adding it to negative 5. That was our whole point, so we can get our 0. So that's done. So the first two spots, there's never anything to do. And then the last two columns, yes, it matters. So I'm taking 5 times row 2. That's negative 25, adding it to 11. Negative 25 plus 11 is actually going to be negative 14. And then finally, if I take the fourth column times negative 5 here, that's going to be 35 plus 7 adds up to 42. And this is, of course, where you know whether you messed it up or not, because our last final step, step six, we need to get a one in that spot. Okay, your only way to do this, you cannot use rows one and two because you'll mess up all the other zeros and ones. Your only thing you can do on this last step is divide. It is the only choice every single time. So we are now going to take row three, and it's got to be divisible by negative 14. We're putting the answer in row 3 as well because we do not want to mess up either of our other two matrices, or excuse me, our other two rows. So the top two rows, done. Bottom row, if I'm divided by 14, I'll have 0, 0. Dividing that by negative 14 will give me 1. 42 divided by negative 14 is conveniently negative 3. We didn't mess it up. We got actual nice number there. That's usually the hint. So now if I finish out the problem, the hard work is done. My top equation is x plus y minus 2z equals negative 1. Second row is y minus 5z equals negative 7. And third row tells me that z equals negative 3. Now all I have to do is sub back in to get my additional answers. So, if I do that, I'm going to have y minus 5 times negative 3 equals negative 7. That's 15. So, if I subtract 15, that's going to give me y equals negative 22. Okay, maybe we weren't expecting a number that big, but it's okay. You can do that. And then, finally, I'm going to have to extend my page here. If I do it again to get the third answer, I'm solving for x now. So I'll have x plus negative 22 is y minus 2 times z, which is negative 3. And that is supposed to equal negative 1. Well, that's really a positive 6. So I have x minus 16 equals negative 1, which means when I add over, x equals 15. And so I have a solution of x is 15, y is negative 22, and z is negative 3. And you have solved your first three variable augmented matrix. Woo! Doggies. Yeah, puppies. 
Now, I know that really plays with your brains. Give it a shot. We're doing a second day of these just because they caught us a lot of trouble. <coughs> I'm going to post one more example of this in case you need to see a talk through of another problem. <coughs> Good luck and don't get all choked up.